from Studio B, this is WGALA Brain Busters. Now, here's your host, Rich Rosen. Well, hello, dear viewers, and welcome to another milestone day here on the set of WGALA Brain Busters. Yes, we are now in round three. Both of these teams have each won twice. Now they're here to face each other. One team will advance to the quarterfinals, and that team will be guaranteed at least $1,000. So every question, every point is extremely important, beginning now with today's opening round. We have 10 point questions. Good luck to all six of you. I know you know how to play. You certainly know how to win. So let's see what happens as you two face each other, beginning now with this 10 point question. Its final line reads, we came in peace for all mankind. Where was this plaque left? Chase? The moon. On the moon, yes. In this number system, nine is nine, A is 10, and F is 15. Uh, Z? Hexadecimal. Hexadecimal, or base 16. Good for you. Isaac Shelby, George St. Clair, and Simon Legree were all his three owners. Who is the title character of Harry, uh, Sophia? Uncle Tom. Uncle Tom and Harriet Beecher Stowe's most famous novel in Nick. It's Mechanicsburg on the board for 10 points. Originally written for a minstrel show by a Yankee named Daniel Decatur Emmett, it begins, I wish I was in the land of cotton. What song became a nickname for the South? Carter. Dixieland. Dixieland or Dixie. Yes, you are correct. In December 1998, Warner Brothers Records re-released this 1982 hit by the artist formerly known as Prince just in time for the millennium. What's the appropriate title? Uh, if you know his music, you'll remember the song 1999. She's been 18 for 65 years, and she finally left River Heights to go to Wilder University. Who is this journalism major and popular investigative sleuth? Sophia. Nancy Drew. She's the one, yes. William Henry Harrison. Henry Clay. Zachary Taylor. Winfred Scott. For what party were these four men presidential candidates? Carter. Whig. The Whig Party, yes. According to the Greek poet Hesiod, she was the first woman made with gifts from all the gods, whose curiosity... Chase. Pandora. Pandora brought misfortune to mankind. Her name, of course, was Pandora. Given its last sentence, can you identify a novel? After all, tomorrow is another day. Oh, we stumped you on uh, Margaret Mitchell's novel, Gone with the Wind. The Grand Coulee Dam is on this river, which flows from British Columbia through Washington and Oregon to the Pacific. What river is it, Colby? Columbia. It is the Columbia, yes. Two of the stars in the bowl point toward the North Star. What is the star cluster in the constellation Ursa Major, Chase? The Pleiades? Oh, no, sorry. Mm -hmm. The we stumped you on the Big Dipper. One is the brother of Mary and Martha. The other is a beggar who eats the crumbs from the rich man's table. Sophia. Lazarus. Lazarus is the name these two biblical characters share. One of the famous sonnets begins, When I have fears that I may cease to be. Who was this romantic poet who caused, who ceased to be in 1821 at the age of 25? Sophia, again. Byron. No, not he, sorry. Chase. Turk? No, sorry, it's John Keats. These tiny disc-shaped bodies in the blood repair small blood vessels and promote coagulation. What are they, Zeke? Platelets. They are platelets. Yes, Ty Cobb, Lou Gehrig, Pete Rose, or Ted Williams? Which of them still has the highest lifetime batting average of .366 over 24 years? Simon. Pete Rose. Not he, no, sorry. Carter. Gehrig. Ty Cobb does. Temple Emmanuel, Riverside Church, Trinity Church, St. John the Divine, and St. Patrick's Cathedral. Our houses of worship, Chase. Dublin? No, sorry. In, in, in what city, U.S. city is this? Colby. New York City. New York City is correct. This 1759 novel satirizes the idea that everything that happens is for the best, and the best is all the possible worlds. What novel by Voltaire tells Sophia? Candy. Candide does tells of the misfortunes of a naive young man. Founded in 1776, this Virginia debating club became a society of scholars and the first U.S. fraternity. It's the oldest academic honor society in the U.S. What three Greek letters form its name? I know you guys are all going to graduate Phi Beta Kappa. He died in 1850 after eating a meal of vegetables, fresh cherries, and buttermilk. Who was this old general who died one year after becoming president? Chase. Uh, Harrison? Nope, not he. Sorry, uh-uh. Colby. 
Grant. Zachary Taylor is the correct answer. It's one of the three muscles in the body that help us move with our thigh. It's also the largest and heaviest muscle in the body. Simon. Quadricep? No, sorry, that it's the uh, gluteus maximus. That sound took us to the end of the round. Gives us a chance to catch our breath. 60 to 60 tie score as we get ready for the one-on-one -on -one rapid fire and team lightning rounds. The intellectual journey of WGALA Brain Busters continues after this break. WGALA Brain Busters will return after this. The final four teams in the WGAL8 Brain Busters Tournament will win cash grants. The third and fourth place teams will receive $1,000 each. The second place team will receive $3,000. And the WGAL8 Brain Busters Champions will receive $5,000 in grant money. Now, here's Rich with our coaches and alternates. Well, hi, everybody. Welcome back. We promised you a great game, and these students are delivering. But we have to thank these important people, the coaches. They're the ones who put together a team. We really appreciate you bringing such a strong team to Studio A. Teaches English, this is Mr. John Frick at Hemfield. You've been teaching several years and 180 days in a year. Uh, I know a lot of people would say that's not outrageous. So there is something really outrageous that has happened to you, even though many times every day can be something outrageous today. True, we seem to bring outrageous with us as a quiz bowl team. Uh, going to Conestoga Valley, so sorry to any viewers from Conestoga Valley. Uh, one time we went, surprise seven inch snowstorm before we came home in the van, not expecting any snow. Went back for a tournament there, loved our time. Fire bells go off, we have to evacuate in the middle. An hour later, tornado warning, we had to hunker down in the building. Same tournament, same day. So I, I feel really bad that every time Hemfield seems to travel to Conestoga Valley, they too get an outrageous day. <laughs> <laughs> well, this has not been outrageous so far. We appreciate you keeping the, uh, any in t t um, weather concerns at bay, because right now everything is looking good. Now let's meet today's alternate, Sonia Dedia. We really appreciate you being here. You are a senior. Okay, so we all have ways of perhaps falling asleep or we all have mnemonics or things we want to memorize, but you work on the Fibonacci sequence? Yes, um, I realized that counting sheep wasn't, kind, wasn't quite cutting it, so I settled for the Fibonacci sequence instead and so, I calculate that to fall asleep. I love it, so can you explain what the Fibonacci sequence is? So the Fibonacci know. sequence is a pattern where it starts with zero and one, and then you add the previous two numbers to get the next number. So it's zero, one, one, two, three, five, eight, and so on. And I calculate that to fall asleep. And it helps you get to sleep. Yeah. Okay, maybe I'll look at that as a technique. Okay, let's head out to uh, Mechanicsburg and we'll say hello to Mr. Marshall. Now, Mr. Marshall, you didn't get to witness your team's last performance. You had a, a substitute, but boy, they really are doing a great job today. And they're having a good time, and that's really important, yeah. and thanks in large part to you. Uh, he's the gifted um, teacher and AP chemistry teacher over at Mechanicsburg. Great to have you here. Thanks a lot. Um, so, like, typical Saturday night for a teacher. I mean, you've done your homework, you've come home. What does a teacher like you do on a Saturday night? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, this past Saturday night was, was a pretty normal standard night. Uh, not surprising, I really love trivia. And so uh, after dinner, played a, a Disney trivia game with my kids and my wife. And then they went to bed and a couple friends came over and played another trivia game on TV and movies. So... Uh, yeah, that's what I love to do. I love it. Well, okay, maybe we'll see you on a trivia game one day. Maybe we'll have an adult version of Brain Busters. <laughs> thanks for being here. Now let's meet today's alternate. This is Jason Beardsley, Jr. Thanks for being here. <laughs> so, you know, it's always interesting to find out what blogs or what websites, you know, students gravitate to, but you go to one that's quite popular. Yeah. Uh, my favorite website, I'm sure everybody's heard of it, is Wikipedia. And I never go there with, like, an explicit goal or anything in mind. I just kind of, like, click on random articles until I like inevitably end up in like a rabbit hole about like types of yeast or popes or something. Now a lot of teachers are not accepting that as a viable means to you know use as a yeah. source. Is that true? They still don't or? I think they've softened up a bit. Have you ever have you ever edited uh, any of the Wikipedia? I have, books? yeah. Fantastic, how interesting. All right, well thanks for coming, thanks for supporting your team. It's time now to get to work again. Here, t here is today's one-on-one -on -one rapid fire where we meet our individual players and pit them against each other in a battle of wits. So first, it's a pleasure to say hello once again to Carter. Carter Gingrich, and you're a junior. And um, one of the many passions that you have is music, but music encompasses a large part of your daily life. Yeah, almost any time, wherever I am, I'm definitely listening to music, or if, if I don't have earbuds in, then I'm humming music in my head. 
uh, and then alongside performing as a passion, I also am getting into composing some music. And is there a particular genre of music that you uh, prefer? Not really. I like stuff all across the board. I'll listen to just about anything you throw at me with open ears. Oh, excellent. <laughs> I love it. All right. uh, Simon Stump, you are a senior over at Mechanics Burnett. It's great to have you back. So you're a senior, and I know I'm, I'm not trying to ask you to nail something down, but you've got some interesting schools that are in the back burner right now? Oh, uh, yeah, I was accepted to Penn State, so I'm probably going to go there for computer science. Well, it's a great school. Have there, were there other choices that you were looking at? or uh, That was my main choice, and I got accepted there, so I didn't really bother <laughs> So there you go. You're safe. You're free. Okay, Simon and Carter, let's put you two one on one. Three South American countries straddle the equator. Ecuador and Brazil are two of them. What's the third country that straddles the equator? Carter. Peru. Not Peru. No, sorry. Simon. Uh, Chile. No, you're both incorrect. Sorry. It's Colombia. In 1973, the Supreme Court declared a Texas law unconstitutional, invalidating all state laws restricting first trimester assignment. Uh, Roe v. Wade. Roe v. Wade is the case uh, with this controversial ruling. And finally, many famous titles begin with the same three words. The Age of, Edith Wharton's 1920 novel and Martin Scorsese's 1993 novel uh, movie, for example, is The Age of Innocence. What word completes Thomas Paine's 1794 pamphlet and Jean-Paul Sartre? Carter. Reason. Reason. And Jean-Paul Sartre's 1943 novel, The Age of Reason. Good anticipation. Worked in your favor. Tie score 70 to 70. Let's meet our two captains. So first from Hemfield, it's a pleasure to welcome back Chase Barrick. Senior, great player, great to have you here. Now, we know you're going to Lehigh, but after Lehigh, if you had a choice of any place in the world to live, you selected a country that surprises me and doesn't. Uh, yes, my ideal at the moment is the city of Freiburg in Bundesland uh, Baden-Württemberg in Germany, because it is one of the world's top cities for public transit, specifically with its tram system. Now, do you speak German? I am in AP German currently, and I am planning on going for a certificate of biliteracy at the end of this year. Fantastic. I love hearing that people embrace foreign language. Good for you. I hope you will land up in Germany one day. Sophia Goss, the captain of the team from Mechanicsburg, a senior. Wonderful to have you here. And you're a fantastic player because you listen to the news. Where It's always uh, something delightful to hear where young people get their news from. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm a really big radio and podcast fan, so I listen to a lot of NPR on the radio, but I also really like their podcasts um, Up First and their NPR Politics Pod. Um, I also really like The Daily from The New York Times. Yeah, it's great. All the news that's fit to print. So, But you only listen to uh, The New York Times. You read it as well? I read it sometimes, but I more often listen. Okay, excellent. Sophia and Chase, listen very carefully as we put you two one-on-one, -on -one because here's three questions for you. Most of human DNA is in the cell nucleus in the chromosomes, but there is also a DNA outside the nucleus inherited from the mother. Where is this DNA found, Chase? The mitochondria. In the mitochondria, yes. In this basic economic system, Goods and services are directly exchanged for each other without the use of money. Chase again. Barter? Barter is what this system is called. And finally, he emphasized human rebellion against meaningless absurdity of life in novels like The Plague and The Stranger. Who was this French author? Camus. Sophia. Camus. Albert Camus is correct. 90 to 80. Let's meet our third players in today's competition. So first from Hemfield, it's a pleasure to welcome back Zeke Stevens, and you are a senior. Great to have you back. And Zeke, I'm just astounded. Uh, you wrote on your biographical sketch the name of your favorite film, and it took me uh, like a little bit to get used to because I don't expect you to embrace spoofs like this. Well, yeah, but just one of the films that I've, I really enjoy is Attack of the Killer Tomatoes because <laughs> it's it's so funny and it has a charming quality to it that makes me laugh, even though it's not the most uh, technically sophisticated film or the most beautiful piece of cinema. It's it's. It just it just makes me smile. Well, it's a low budget film, but it was also done pre CGI. I mean, this, yeah. this was I mean, it was done in the eighties, I think, mm -hmm. or late seventies, yeah. something like that. But I mean, it's funny after uh, after seeing like more horror films to see a, to see a spoof of that and, and uh, upturning the conventions of the genre. Well, I might have to revisit it after you reminded me of it. Let's meet Colby Costalic. Costalic. Um, you're a junior at McKenzieburg, and it's great to have you back. And, uh, you, you know, you're a junior, but you already know what area of study uh, you want to pursue in college, and I'd love to if you'd share that with yeah, us. Yeah, um, I would like to go to college for engineering, probably like mechanical engineering or chemical engineering. 
Um, and I was looking at a few schools that include like Pitt, Virginia Tech, or uh, Penn State. Oh, all great schools. They'd be lucky to get a student like you. Colby and Zeke, let's put you two one on one. Alban Barkley, Nelson Rockefeller, and Dan Quayle all held the same low profile political position. What is it? Hmm. Oh, Zeke? Uh, UN ambassador. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Colby, do you have any idea? Well, we summed you on vice presidents. Alvin was Truman's, of course, Nelson uh, Rockefeller, and then Dan Quayle. Um, next question. Most historians think he was a 12th century Miller's son turned poacher and then outlawed to protest the sheriff's treatment of the people of Nottingham. Who is a Zeke? Robin Hood. Robin Hood is this popular folk hero who continues to be wildly represented in literature, TV, and movies. And finally, it was called the Great East River Bridge when it opened in 1883. It connected Manhattan to the borough that gave it its name. What is Brooklyn oh, Bridge? What, pardon me? Brooklyn Bridge. The Brooklyn Bridge is this New York landmark. You are correct. 100 to 90. We're now going to pick up the pace and play today's 60-second team lightning round. Sophia, your team is behind at this point but only, by only 10 points. So you will have the privilege of selecting first among these three quizzes. Turn of the century movies. Sporting goods. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. There's not a bad answer in this quiz. They're all good. For 10 points each, identify these people, places, and things that are just full of goodness. Remember, each answer contains the word good. Sophie, I take your answers to the team's answer. Simon and Colby are ready to help you along. 60 seconds on the clock, which will begin after I finish reading the first question. So good luck, and here we go. A contraction for God be with you. It means farewell. Goodbye. Yes, in 1488, Bartholomew Diaz first sailed around this cape at the tip of Africa. Uh, good hope. Correct. A rabbit's foot or a four-leaf clover if you're superstitious. Good luck. That is correct. Robin Williams on the radio in Saigon in the 1987 good movie. Good morning, Vietnam. Correct. GMA, the ABC TV series, if you're good just Good morning, kidding. America. Correct. Usher's 2014 song about a young lady's osculatory skills. Pass. Good kisser. Classic children's bedtime story by Margaret Wise Brown. Good night, moon. Good night, moon. Correct. A useless, worthless person, a wastrel. Uh, pass. Good for nothing. According to Christians, it's the day when Jesus was crucified. Good Friday. Correct. Pearl S. Buck won the 1932 Pulitzer Prize for this novel. Uh, pass. The Good Earth, FDR's Latin American policy in the 1930s. Pass. Good neighbor policy. It's HDL, high density lipoprotein. Pass. It's good um, cholesterol. Ben Affleck, Matt Damon, and Robin Williams won Academy Awards for this 1997. Good Will Hunting. Correct. Freddie High, um, Highmore plays a young autistic surgeon on this good, ABC. The Good Doctor. That is correct. Clint Eastwood is the man with no name in the spaghetti western. Pass. Good, the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. Pink and white licorice candy first made in 1893. It was good and plenty. Wow. Nine correct. 90 points came your way. Okay. Chase, it's up to you. Would you like turn of the century movies or sporting goods? Uh, we would like sporting goods, please. Sporting goods. You can be good at sports or good at what you know about sports. So for 10 points each, let's see if you have the goods when it comes to these sports. Chase, I take your answers to the team's answer. Carter and Zeke are ready to help you along 60 seconds on the clock, which will begin after I finish reading the first question. Good luck, and here we go. How many events are in the Olympic decathlon? 10. 10 is correct. What sport did Dr. James Naismith invent at Springfield YMCA in 1891? Basketball. Basketball, yes. In golf and tennis, it's four major tournaments. In baseball, it's bases loaded home run. Grand, Grand Slam. Grand Slam. In what league will you find the Lions, Bears, Eagles, Falcons, Jaguars, Panthers, and Dolphins? Uh, NFL. NFL, yes. Harvard, Yale, and Princeton all belong to what athletic conference? Ivy League. Ivy League, Ivy League yes. Who was the only nine-time MVP in the National Hockey League? Pass. Wayne Gretzky. In what sport might you perform a triple Lutz, a triple Axel, and a Sal Cow? Uh, figure skating? Figure skating, yes. Who was the first person to run a mile in under four minutes? Skip. Roger Bannister. What sport is played by DC United and the Los Angeles Galaxy? Soccer. Soccer, yes. What baseball team plays its home games at Fenway Park? Uh, Red Sox. The Red Sox do. On what holiday in May is the Indianapolis 500 run every year? No answer. Memorial Day. What annual event is held at Roland Garros Stadium in Paris? The no French Open. In what Ohio City is the Professional Football Hall of Fame located? Uh, Canton. Canton. It was in Canton, and that was right on the buzzer, so we can take it. Eight correct. 80 points came your way. Look at that. We have a tie score. Oh, is that, is that correct? We had nine correct? Nine. nine correct. I'm sorry. 190 to 180, but our teams are neck and neck as we head into our next round of play. This is the bonus Brain Buster. It's time to reveal today's category, and that's civil rights. So our teams will wager zero to 25 points based on their knowledge of civil rights while you watch these very important messages.
Watch all the season's episodes of WGAL 8 Brain Busters anytime on WGAL.com. Our online home also includes our tournament schedule and a chance to learn more about the show and host Rich Rosen. Go to WGAL.com and click on Brain Busters. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back. We are having a blast here, and we hope you are enjoying yourselves as well. But it's now time for today's bonus Brain Buster, and we're heading into this round with our teams neck and neck. During our break, our teams wagered 0 to 25 points based on their knowledge of civil rights. So we're going to head into the News 8 newsroom with Lori Burkhalter. She has today's question. Lori, welcome back. Thanks, Rich. Now here is your bonus brain buster. Some people believe that the gay rights movement began in 1969. What riots in New York City in 1969 sparked the movement? Again, some people believe that the gay rights movement began in 1969. What riot in New York City in 1969 sparked the movement? Good luck with your answer. Now back to you in the studio. Rich. Thank you, Lori. Good luck, teams. Well both teams were so eager to write their answer down. I'm really impressed that if you get this answer right, this is excellent. So Chase, we're ready to show the answer. Stonewall is absolutely correct. A 25 point wager, good for you. Did you come up with Stonewall, Sophia? You did, but only a 15 point wager, a little more conservative. 215 to 180. It's now time for the all important final frenzy. This time we have 20 point questions. It's anybody's game. Pick up those signaling buttons. Let's see what happens now with this 20 point question. It's a Swahili word for first fruits of the harvest. What is the seven day holiday celebrated from December 26th to January 1st? Carter. Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa's correct. At constant acceleration, the velocity of a falling object increases proportional to the time. What increases in proportion to the square of the time? Z. Distance traveled or displacement. That is absolutely correct. In 1933, after a fire destroyed part of the German parliament, Hitler blamed the communists and led the Nazis to power. What building burned? Chase. The Reichstag. The Reichstag is correct. On the Grand Canal, you'll pass the Customs House, the Bridge of Sighs, and the Ducal Palace. What European city are you traveling? Chase again. Venice. You're in Venice, yes. Of the five regular platonic solids, only one has pentagons for faces. Which one? Chase. The Dodecahedron. Correct again. In May 1865. He published Drum Taps, a small book of poems about the soldiers who died during the Civil War. Sequel to Drum ta Taps, published in the fall. Sophia. Crane. No, not he, sorry. Included when lilacs last. Carter. Whitman. Whitman, when lilacs last on the dooryard bloom. Uh, the poet who wrote it was Walt Whitman. One of the most famous opera houses in the world is located in Milan, Italy. It is named for the stairs that lead up to it. What is it? Well, if you go to Milan, you're going to see La Scala. When Lenin's party was a small splinter group, he called it the Bolshevik or Majority Party. The opposition obligingly called themselves the Minority Party. Chase. Menshevik. Menshevik, yes, led by Charles Sumner and Thaddeus Stevens. They controlled Reconstruction after the Civil War and made it a millet chase. The Radical Republicans? The Radical Republicans was his congressional faction, yes. He moved from Paris to Key West, Florida in 1928 and lived there for 12 years while he wrote Death in the Afternoon. Simon. Hemingway. Ernest Hemingway is correct. According to the theory of continental drift, the seven continents were once all part of a single supercontinent. Pangea. Pangea, yes, while serving in the U.S. Embassy in Madrid. He wrote The Legends of the Alhambra. During his stay in England, he wrote The Sketchbook. Who was this 19th century American author? And that was Washington Irving. This legendary rake and lover has been the subject of a novel by Balzac, poems by Browning and Byron, dramas, Sophia. No answer. Oh, sorry. And dramas by Moliere and Shaw, and an opera by Mozart. Who is he? A ch a chase. Don Juan. Don Juan is correct. The first member of the Hudson River School of Artists. His works include The Course of the Empire and The Voyage of Life. Who was this 19th century artist? And that was Thomas Cole. That sound takes us to the end of the realm. After a tremendous performance by both teams, but Hemfield really soared in that final round, so they are going to return for round four, the quarterfinals. But please. Do come back in just a few short moments. Scorekeeping for WGAL8 Brain Busters, presented by Jennings College Consulting, where students discover the right college fit for the future. We'll return after this. Welcome back to WGAL8 Brain Busters, the Susquehanna Valley's longest running high school quiz show. Once again, here's your host, Rich Rosen. Well, there you have it, folks. What a game. Hemfield, you came alive in that last round of play. 
So they are going to come back for what is known as the semifinals because we're going to have four teams left. So they are guaranteed at least $1,000. Mechanicsburg, we extend our deepest gratitude for your spirited participation, and we hope you had as much fun playing as we did watching you. But we do have to say goodbye to you, and we hope to see your team participate next time. Coming up on the next uh, WGA LA Brain Busters, we're wel welcoming back some more teams for a third appearance. This time it's Waynesboro and Elizabethtown, and we are expecting another fantastic competition. We hope to have the pleasure of your company. Thanks for your unwavering support. We hope to see you next time. Goodbye, everybody.